I once hid a secret message in my high school magazine by changing the font of specific letters so that if you read only those letters, they spelled out something that I thought was hilarious in Latin. Uh, this is an example of something called steganography, which is the practice of hiding or otherwise secreting a hidden message inside a larger message or object. It has a long history, I can recommend this Wikipedia article, but today I thought we'd bring it up to the modern era by looking at how we can do this with a large language model. So in the notebook, which will be linked below, we're going to load up Meta's Llama 3 8D model. This is the language model, and we're going to first see exactly how we can produce text with such a model. So here we have a piece of text to start. Uh, hello, I'm a language model. And this gets turned into tokens, and then we feed these tokens, or the uh, integer representations of them, through the model, and we get out a set of so-called loggets, a set of scores, um, with higher scores corresponding to more likely next tokens. You've heard these models called uh, autocomplete on steroids. This is what they mean. Um, but the thing is, they don't just predict a single next word. They actually give you a, a score or a probability for all possible next words. And so here we're looking at the top five. The uh, most likely next word in this case is and. And if we choose that, we can then add that to our inputs, feed all of that through the model again, and see what the next predicted word is, and so on. So we see here and, then I, then apostrophe M as a different token, here, then two, and so on. Um, so this is how we generate text. Now this is called uh, greedy decoding, we're just always picking the most likely next token. Um, but there are of course lots of sampling strategies that people use. You may have seen a temperature parameter, and what this is doing is saying rather than always choosing the next most likely token, uh, we can choose from am among the likely candidates, maybe based on how high of a score they've get they're given, um, and how much randomness we inject there, that can be something like the temperature. And the more randomness, the more creative and unpredictable the outputs will be. Um, but we can also just have like direct control of this. So for example, in this case here, what I can do is instead of always picking the most likely token, I can alternate between picking the most likely and the second most likely. And so if we rerun this, we're now looking at those candidates, saying oh, I'll choose and, um, but this time I is the most likely, um, but today is the second most likely, and, in, and since we say oh, every second one I'll pick the second most likely, the next token is today. And so from here on we've diverged from that original input sequence. And so today I apostrophe LL, so now we're getting a slightly different completion. Right, but importantly, it still looks somewhat believable. And you could add things like, oh, if there's one obviously correct candidate, like here, this one is assigned 70% probability, the next highest is 5% probability, you know, maybe there's some threshold where you say, look, maybe we'll always pick the obvious next candidate if there is one, um, but if there's lots, 20%, 13%, 12% that are similar, uh, maybe we'll be able to choose between them. Um, and so this comes into play when people are talking about watermarking LLMs. Uh, having secret rules for how you choose these tokens is one way to embed a hidden watermark that says, hey, this text was generated by our language model. Um, but there's no reason we can't also use this to hide messages. And so in this next section here, all I've done is create some simple code with the help of Claude Sonnet. Um, and this is going to take in an input string and encode it into binary. We're going to use five binary numbers, ones or zeros, um, for every input character. So you can see here when I run this with hello world, this gets encoded into the string of numbers, ones and zeros, and decoded back into hello world again. Um, so let's change that. There we go. Um, okay, so I bet you can see where this is going. We can have a one or a zero and a bunch of those representing some string. Uh, we can choose the first or second most likely token. Um, we're just gonna run through that same kind of generation loop as before, given an initial prompt and a secret message. We'll turn the secret message into binary and then we'll use that to decide whether we're using the most likely to token or the second most likely, next token. Um, and so if I run this, it does take a little while because it's having to do one forward pass um, through the model for every step. Um, but when this is finished running, what we'll see is a message that looks like a harmless and general completion of this initial starting prompt. Um, but hopefully we're able to encode our secret message in there as well, such that somebody who knew to use our decoding scheme like figured out how we've done this, could be able to pull it out, but on first glance, there's no even visual indication that the message is there at all. This is different to encryption, where you want to hide the message and make it completely unextractable, um, but it doesn't necessarily give you something that looks innocent. So an encrypted message might look like a, a random string of symbols, and then even if someone can't decode it, well, they can say, hey, this is suspicious. Where steganography is all about looking innocent, um, but then having that hidden meaning there underneath. And of course, you could uh, also uh, encrypt your message before you hit it within the larger message. So the two kind of play together. All right, so here we have our uh, hidden text. 
When I was young, we used to visit my grandmother in the countryside. She always bakes the most delicious pies. She used a special pie dish that I loved. It was round, white ceramic pie plate, yada, yada, yada. No hint of hidden message here. So how do we decode this back? We just do the inverse of what we just did. We're gonna look at the predicted probabilities for all of the words and see, is this the most likely or the second most likely? And that's gonna tell us whether it's a zero or a one respectively. Um, now the nice thing is for encoding, we had to keep adding the word to the sequence and then feeding the whole thing through again so that it could make a prediction for the next word. Um, but actually the way these language models are trained is that they predict these, uh, these next word probabilities for all the tokens in the input sequence as well. Uh, so that when you're training, you don't have to only train on the last word in a sequence, you can train on all of them in parallel. Um, so this is nice, we only have to do one forward pass through the model and we get those probabilities or those scores, which we can turn into probabilities for every single token in the, in the text. Um, so we only do one forward pass, the decoding is much quicker than the encoding. And if I feed through that um, encoded text, we can see here we have roughly our message. There's some extra nonsense tokens at the beginning because remember we started with a prompt that didn't have any hidden messages. And so you can always just specify an offset and say, hey, start from the 25th token and decode from there. Uh, there's also gonna occasionally be the odd uh, typo or mistake. Um, I don't know if this is due to special tokens in the string or encoding and decoding not being perfectly symmetric, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the message is, that is there, it's readable. Um, and you could add error checking or um, be a little bit more cautious using uh, skip hidden tokens equals false and so on. Um, okay, so this is, this is great, we've managed to do Steganography um, here, I forgot to clear the outputs, but you can see another piece of text, another hidden meaning. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that's been educational. And I also hope it's inspired some ideas of how this might be uh, more practically useful for, like I said, maybe watermarking generated text or um, yeah, assigning other kinds of um, hidden metadata or data within some LLM generated text. Um, and there's definitely many, many ways you could improve this. If you do, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.